All right, y'all. So in this one, we're going to be going over uh, something very big. So this woman is asking some very great questions, yo. Like she's asking some very great questions. So this one is going to be revealing if the Omi token is actually needed for Vivi, uh, essentially. It, it, it's like, what's the benefit of using the Omi token if it just comes with so many complications? So, yeah, this is going to be from David Yu, and we're going to see his response, man. Um, Yeah, let's just jump straight into it, y'all. Let's jump straight into it. Tokens. I just want to get to the bottom of this with you and Will. Can this be done without tokens? Why make it? I mean, there is, you said it yourself, there's so much complication here. And I feel like tokens are making it not, not just more complicated, but it's not palatable for the mainstream entrepreneur to want to even uh, dabble into something like that. I mean, if, if we have one more exchange go down and we have another FTX happening, uh, we cannot bear a credibility like that in, in this space. So my mm -hmm. question to you both is, can what you're doing be done without tokens? Oh, I think you're. I, I, could, I could jump in. Sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, go ahead. it depends on, you know, if you're talking about NFTs or fungible tokens, right? You know, again, it's a little bit of a different approach. You know, we don't have a fungible token. We focus just on NFTs. So to show just a different side of it, again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Our approach is we didn't need a fungible token uh, to start, uh, focused primarily on the NFTs. We believe NFT and blockchain technology is critical as far as entering a digital collectible uh, space and, and proving digital scarcity to provide digital ownership to, to provide provenance i think that technology is critical um and it's, it's kind of where this whole industry is heading so for us we kind of boiled it down to what are the essential components of blockchain that we need to, to integrate into the product and just we focused around that for us it was just focusing around the the, the toys uh, and the NFT component of it, and then exploring if it makes sense to do a fungible token down the line and what regulations are necessary on how to do it. You know, David, you know, very uh, you know, astutely said, there's different regulations depending on where the company's headquartered and located. There's a lot of moving parts here, and those laws are changing on a month-to-month -month basis. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to keep up with all this stuff. So, yeah, yep. to us, there's not a right or wrong approach. There's just a bunch of different, uh, you know, ways to, as you would say in your tweet, Mona, bake a cake. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, everybody's baking. The mission is to bake a cake, but the recipes are different. But, but Will, do tell us a little bit. I mean, I know they're the, the same person who asked me about their memorabilia business, and they yeah. want to add that digital layer. They're listening right now. When it comes to that cash flow and raising money, enlighten them about how it's possible if you don't have uh, a token-based uh. model. Sure. So for us, uh, just to give one example, we raised venture capital. We went uh, to venture capitalists in the Web3 and tech and gaming space and shared with them what you know we're doing. And you know we raised capital from those firms and those investors. So you know just you know like a lot of folks that do a fungible token, whether they raise through a uh, an offering or or or, or a certain sale. Uh, that's one way to do it for us. We took a, 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 a one of a more, you would say, traditional approach to, to starting a tech company, which would be to go to uh, private investors and venture capitalists. That's how we got the initial seed capital for the company. We use that to build the product uh, and establish our initial partnerships and technology and then, you know, build out from there. So would you say, uh, what about the, the ownership aspect of it through the token? Mm -hmm. How does ownership work with, with the collectibles if there is no token, if that makes sense? Well, those are, they're two separate things. I think, you know, you look at VV, you have, you know, their, their OMI token, and then you have the actual collectibles themselves, right? I think that they're, they're two separate tokens. One's a fungible token and one's an NFT, a non-fungible token. For us, we just focus on non-fungible tokens. Every crypto uh, is effectively an NFT that you know you have ownership over and you'll be able to buy sell trade and, and that kind of thing so it's just the different kinds of tokens um you know for for different purposes really so andrew uh wasn't sure if you want to jump in with any questions on that my man saved david you that's crazy my man, like he completely took over that question because that was going to be wild to hear a response from david i wasn't expecting that 
Now, the only thing I, I'd want to add, and, and Chad is saying this right now, and this is, I think, the primary argument to have tokens is that it's not just an owner, it's not an ownership vehicle or just an ownership vehicle. There is additional utility that can come along with that token that can unlock experiences, that can do various things. Uh, but primarily unlocking experiences would be like the broader category of the additional utility there. So would you say, David, that that would be the primary reason, in your opinion, to have something like a fungible token is to open up additional, let's say, Web3 experiences for users that have it? Um, obviously, governance yes. is a part of that as well. But I think you know the unlocking of experiences part is the part that most people talk about it being the most exciting. Governance is usually for the only the top 1% most hardcore users in your community that actually care. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? With, yeah. Do you think that's uh, well, the strongest well, argument for yeah, I mean, de definitely is around the utility value out of that. Um, and that was back in 2017 when we started the business. It was a way to get that crowdsourcing, uh, bringing that utility. And then further down as you build the business, like I had mentioned uh, previously, is that if we were to do it again, the business operation or even the app could possibly be built different way. Um, and and there, there's many layers uh, complexity to go into that uh which i you know i don't think t today's forum uh, i can you know explain it all uh but like like i had mentioned if you were seeking advice on going into the business in the web3 i don't know some about this response makes me feel as though what he is trying to say without saying it is that if he could do it all over again, he would, they wouldn't be using the Omi token right now. Like that's, that's what, that's what it, I, I'm kind of feeling like seeing how crypto is, is handling it and how they're doing it and how less complex it is and how they're able to accomplish what they want. Like if VV could, was just focusing on VV and you remove the token aspect out of it, I think VV would probably be doing a lot better. Like, but the thing is, it's a, comp a whole new complicated layer that's just as heavy as the NFTs themselves, the, the OMI token. So it is kind of crazy. And it, it kind of, I mean, it's kind of scary because it's like at any point, what happens when it makes the most sense and is, is the most logical to just get rid of the token? Can that happen? Will that happen? I mean... 7% gone here, like you lock away, accidentally lock away a big percentage. It's like, I mean, the tokens are dwindling away. Like, you know, like, I don't know. That's just, it's weird. Um, you know, the one of the way back in the 217, 16 was uh, crowdsourcing around uh, token sales. And that's very around the jurisdictions that you want to pick for that fundraising. Uh, what we have built in VV, a very se segregated business is very much focused in the digital collectible experience. And both of them needs their utility, right? Um, uh, like w what Will has built is that toy going into that metaverse where VV has built something that goes into AR um, and th the showroom and, and so on. And we want to bring more utility value to both side of our business. Um, yeah, we that sim simplifies uh, is yes and everything that you do in the web three it's all about that utility and that's what people talk about everything you do in web three is all about that utility so it seems like they're well aware that as far as the omi token needs utility and hopefully this is a a, a sign that they understand that the nfts are going to need more utility because that AR feature alone, I don't think is cutting it. it I, I really think that they need a lot more than that. But yeah, I mean, let's see if they continue to dive more into it. Because I mean, they're they're dodging, they're dodging the the Omi the Omi question. They're dodging it. They're like it's really being dodged if you need the cryptocurrency attached. Like my man took over that answer, and, and David didn't have to really speak on that. Which that that's the one that I would care most about hearing that from since he's the one who can speak from both sides like he's the only one really qualified to give that answer but i think the answer is something that would be controversial which is they probably would not use the omi token they probably wouldn't go the token route they probably wouldn't have a crypto like they, they probably wouldn't do it if they had it to do all over again that's what it seems like yeah absolutely but so so i mean but utility doesn't have to come through the tokens 
correct? I, you... I love her. I love her. Will was saying yeah. it can come from the NFT, it can come from the experience, right. it can come from that tangible product. Pudgy's not here, but you know, the, the having uh, bridging the Web two and the Web three through those experiences. Mm. That's that can be the utility, correct? We can focus on that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's sort of what brings us to to our second topics and time flies here. <laughs> I thought she was going to push more. I want to like the, following that up. All you needed to throw in there was. So what is the use of the token like the crypto? Like, like, what's the use of that then? Like, that's, that's all that was needed right there, bro. Like, all that was needed. Oh, wow, time really flies here. I just looked at the time. Um, but before we get into the second topic here, because hold, hold that thought about utility, um, I want to ask the chat here, and it's going so fast too, to start putting in some of your questions and make sure it's uh, related to the conversation that we're having. All right, y'all. So, yeah, we're going to end it here. I mean, this, th this was pretty much, I mean, danced around. It was danced around, but... I got the vibe. It's just my personal vibe. I don't I don't know. But I mean, hopefully they're going to do right by the token holders and they're going to implement the token now that they I mean, at this point they're in this deep. They've gone this far with the token. They're trying they're trying to figure it out. They're looking at studying regulations and all type of stuff. I mean, at this point when you put so much in the token, do you think that they're just going to one day up and up? Now forget the token. Forget all these years of work we done put into understanding it, waiting on regulations, all of this. Let's just abandon it. Do you think that I think they've kind of gone too far with the token to just abandon it? But I do believe that if they had it to do all over again, they would have never ch chosen the token route. But let me know what you all think in the comment section down below, fam. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn notifications, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, Joe.